Hello and welcome to Capital Market Live on Channels Television. We're going to get a check on how your money performed um, this week and get a sense of what to expect you know, going into next week. I'm Ladi Williams. Let's start off with um, global markets that we track. We see European stocks close higher. Um, that was on Friday as uh, global equity markets uh, look to rebuild the loss from uh, Monday. That Monday route um, definitely impacted most uh, markets uh, that we track from the recent um, sell-offs on Mondays due to um, expectations for the U.S. Um, economy. Some were afraid maybe um, the U.S. Fed had broken something, you know, in the um, U.S. Um, economy. So uh, for Europe, there we see uh, markets uh, rebounding uh, from the sharp sell-offs on Monday. Then take it on to um, Asia Pacific. Uh, now we see markets close higher um, there, tracking gains on Wall Street and uh, uh, Europe. So we see the Shanghai Composite uh, was the laggard, 0.27% down at 2,862 points. Uh, the Nikkei, uh, that was up 0.56% and a bigger move from the Hang Seng um, Index, 1.17%. Uh, then we'll take it on to uh, the U.S. Now we see U.S. Um, stocks ticked up as the stock market built on its uh, incredible uh, comeback. That was from uh, Monday. And we see uh, the Nasdaq, tech-heavy Nasdaq, 0.51% gain on Friday. The S&P uh, 500, 5,344 points, up 0.47%. We'll see the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, with a lower gain there, 0.13%. Um, that was for Friday. But I'm sure investors are still wondering, are these uh, markets out of the woods yet? You know, following what happened on, on Monday. Some say it could be a dead cat's bounce, but we'll see if this is sustained, you know, going into um, next week. All right, let's bring you home now uh, for the NASD uh, OTC securities market. It ended the week in a negative um, notes that the index fell by 0.93% uh, week to date, while the market's overall value uh, dropped by 2 point, um, dropped a, a few percentage points against the 2 trillion um, level um, that was uh, stood at last week. At the same time, volume of securities traded um, dipped by more than 47% uh, to 6.98 million units. The value traded climbed by over 39%, while the number of deals carried out and uh, stocks traded ended uh, positive um, for the week. And it's day 10 of the hardship protests in Nigeria. We see protesters in various parts of Nigeria made their demands uh, known. Some were peaceful while uh, there were reports of looting and violence in some parts. But let's gauge the impact so far on Nigeria's capital market. Join us for this conversation is Mr. Iwaride Longez, the Managing Director, CEO, um, NASD. Joining me right here um, in the studio. Uh, great to have you. Good evening. Good evening, Ladi. Yeah, so um, quite a lot yes. has happened in the first um, 10 days of um, August. And the protesters did say they were going to protest for 10 days. And uh, this is day 10. And I'm sure, you know, we've seen a lot in yes. this um, past days. In our first coverage, day one, two, three, um, it was um, quite sad to see some parts um, having had been um, hijacked. You know, we know the government did warn that... Um, you know, we, we have those that would try to, you know, hijack peaceful protests and all of that. But we did have, you know, some peaceful protests in some parts, yes. you know, of the country. So talk to me about, you know, your impression, you know, of the overall protests. It's a, that's a very, it's a very difficult and very emotional subject to talk about. Right. Um, I don't think it will be, it will be very insensitive to say that, um, the protests are not meaningful. They are very meaningful. People are um, angry at many things, you know. But um, I guess in all of this, at the end of the day, um, we need to be rational about how we progress, you know. And um, I guess what people are um, really struggling with is the shared responsibility across board. Um, you can't ask us to be patient and sacrifice and um, have your cake today and not be patient and sacrifice. So I guess that's what people are driving at. That. But in the end, we still have a country to develop, you know, and um, we must be clear about the path that we're going to take to development. You know, so while we protest, we should also be thinking about really what should the end game be? We shouldn't just be angry. We should be thinking about where should this land? You know, so it's difficult for me to say as an individual um, what people should do, but because people 
are simply reacting to the way they feel. Um, Nigeria is in a bit of a... Nigeria is like, the situation of Nigeria is like a startup company. Um, you're thinking about um, liquidity. Liquidity is one of our biggest challenges. Um, long term, you might be very positive. Um, you might come out very strong long term. But you're thinking about liquidity. You're thinking about product mix. You're thinking about uh, route to market. Um, you're thinking about motivation of your staff. All of these things need to be, happen, I mean, so that you can actually be successful. And that's where Nigeria is currently. Um, the government is saying to us, be patient. Um, we think we have, a hand on, we have a handle on this. Give us some time. It should work out. Um, but we need to see some strategic development in the direction of where um, this would be good. And just picking up from uh, the part where you said that uh, imagine, you know, Nigeria was a startup. Yes. So I'm, I'm trying to also imagine that. And I'm wondering how, you know, investors, you know, that invested in a startup, you know, for instance, say Nigeria, how do you think they'll be feeling at this point? I think Nigeria presents a fantastic opportunity for any investor today. Um, there is a, I would say we're in a twilight zone. And um, assets are cheap, a lot cheaper than they should be. And um, everybody is laying their bets in the opposite direction. That's the time when you need to look for bargains. You know, so investors that are making uh, purchases in, ver on ver in various assets today, I think that five years from now, um, when all of the passions settle, we would see that um, this was a good time to invest. Definitely. So I guess um, that uh, parlance from uh, the greatest investor, uh, Warren Buffett, he says, uh, uh, buy when the market is afraid yes. and sell exactly. you know, when the market is greedy. greedy. So yes. we're looking for that greedy moment yes. in Nigeria at some oh, point. Oh, yes. I mean, um, this is the time when everybody is afraid. You know? So um, liquidity, cash is um, king in this kind of period. You know? So you could easily buy assets for cheap and um, very, very high quality assets for cheap, you know? So um, I, I guess, like I said, it's an emotional subject. You shouldn't drown, you can't say drown out the noise, but what I'll say is skin your eyes and look for the opportunities. That's the, that's the mantra. Uh, how do you think, um, you know, international investors are you know, seeing what, you know, played out in, in this uh, first 10 days of August? Because we did see reaction, you know, when you look at uh, bonds, our uh, global bonds, yes. you know, the market, we saw, you know, investors asking for more, you know, premium, risk premium, you know, yes. to, you know, lend money. So what's your assessment, you know, so far in, well, in the capital market? Well, it's difficult to say. I can't speak completely and authoritatively about the international investors. Um, and I think also the... Um, I mean, for international investors, you look at your universal radar and say, um, where should I be putting money? What, what, is, the, what is easier to do? And then um, what are the return prospects? And then you match the two together and say, where should I be putting money? Nigeria is a bit difficult for them to assess. I mean, their own countries are also um, in periods of transition. We see what's happening in the UK. We see that um, in the U.S. there's um, a toss-up of where everything will go. Um, and then, of course, you also know about the Middle East challenges, uh, Russia and Ukraine. So people, I mean, it's not easy to find the right, I mean, it's not easy to find a, an environment that is, um, I would say, in clear harmony and is pacific currently. Um, you have to look for good bargains. So Nigeria still presents a very strong prospect, but people would hold on and they would ask for risk premiums at this point because of where they see the turmoil is going. And um, there have been, kind, there have been um, insinuations about um, adventurers in the Nigerian system. You know, I don't know where that is going, you know, so people worry about that. But you see, for us, our, um, our, our prospect is here. And we need to, we take a different view of many of these things. You know, I'm, We've come a long way in some of these things, so we have the capacity to navigate. You know, I think that international capital gradually is beginning to believe in Nigeria a lot more. I mean, you'd have these blips, but um, things 
would straighten out and you'd look for more bargains. You know, so there's some key strategic things that need to happen. And um, we'd, see, um, we'd see people write their checks in this direction. But I would say, I mean, that's just, this, was, this is the, um, uh, what I was talking about, about um, a startup situation. Liquidity is what is exclusively focused on in the Nigerian, environment, in Nigerian administration today. You're simply just trying to balance books. Um, uh, you're thinking about um, the foreign exchange, how are you going to get supply of um, petroleum products? You know, um, how are you going to meet recurrent expenditure? That is not going to happen forever. You know, so if you're a good manager, you'd have to ride the storm, you know, and then cast your mind as to what you're going to build going forward. So we need to bring the fiscal part of this economy, fiscal part of this uh, uh, economy, this discussion into play. Because we've seen important. all the action from the monetary side, you know, there's just from so the, much they can do. Uh, first half, there's just so much they can do. Over 700 basis points um, yes. hike so far. We've seen tightening. Yes. But still, you know, the inflation problem, you know, is still with us. And uh, yes. even though some have said the bright spot, maybe we've seen inflation rising at a slower pace. But that change, you know, for the last um, um, reports. But you know, let's look at results. It's earnings season, and yes. we've seen a couple of companies. You know, roll out the results for the second quarter and the um, first half, you know, of 2024. Yes. From m most of the stories you've seen, what is that telling us about the business environment? Well, it depends on what sectors you are focused on. I mean, we have a very strong oil and gas prospect on our market. Well, I say on our market today. Um, Given with all the issues we've seen in the oil and gas uh, yes. <laughs> industry the past week. Yeah, I mean, so um, that company has really powered the exchange to um, a very positive point, you know, and they've had, I mean, this is Aradel PLC. They've uh, released their, I think it's half year results, and they've grown by over, I would think, I mean, on the average, maybe turnover, um, if, if I recall, the turnover is significant. I know it's over 60%. I, I, if I if I recall correctly, it's about two hundred and some two hundred and ninety seven percent, but it's phenomenal. That's the longer shot of it, you right. know. So um, companies that have the capacity to earn hard currency, of course, will do well, you know. So all of this is driving us to the fact that we must create opportunities that would harness um, external opportunities. But this, that's not easy to do. So maybe it's a twelve month. Um, 12-month um, venture, maybe it is a little more, but you have to start today. You can't keep complaining and saying, oh, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, and then um, 12 months time, you're still saying you're hungry. Say you're hungry, but then start planting something. That's what we need to do. The opportunities are there, you know, so, um, but the opportunities are not scraped from the streets. You have to walk them to get there. Right. And so, you know, definitely we've seen, you know, some of these companies, you know, the revenue, you know, looks uh, quite good. But, yes. you know, some are saying that um, when you look at, you know, cost of, you know, goods sold for, for some companies yes. and, you know, cost of doing business, we're seeing that also rising. That is true. So what I, what I, what I term that to be is when Nigeria is approaching a new equilibrium, a new market equilibrium. You can't, you can't build your cost models on the past. We've moved forward. We've increased, um, uh, what's it called, uh, petroleum products price. We've increased um, electricity price. Shout out to Bande. Um, yes, we've, um, the exchange rate has uh, gone in, uh, in our disfavor. You know, so the equilibrium has shifted, and that's the cost of living that we're under pressure on, you know. So what needs to happen is that we need to expand ourselves, right? Um, it's a transition, but... To create a higher value environment, you have to do things differently. And I think that's one of the key things that must be dealt with is accountability. Accountability is key to everything. Accountability and orderliness, key to all of this. If you don't do that, you're just going to be running in the wrong direction and you will not get anything done. And we don't need to go in the right, wrong direction, yes. you know, at this time. We need to see movement, you know, in the right yes. direction. But we'll look at, you know, other things um, right after the break. Definitely, we've seen the companies rolling out results, but we need to also look at some key 
issues there, rising energy costs and how that's impacting um, this company. So stay with us. We'll still continue the conversation right after this break. Welcome back. Well, we're still um, analyzing all that's uh, transpired in uh, Nigeria's uh, capital market and uh, talking about um, results rolling in. Definitely, we've seen you know different companies uh, reel out their Q2 and H1 um, earnings, and uh, definitely we've seen some heavily impacted by um, rising cost of energy and other um, issues. But we still have um, right here in the studio, Mr. Wiredey um, Longe, MD, NESD um, Exchange, still um, with us. Thank you for staying on. Thank you. So um, another issue, you know, at this time, we've seen the Naira yes. and um, the exchange rate to the dollar. Yes. Everyone's been talking about the dollar for the past um, maybe two years or so. Yes. It's, it's never been this, you know, much, you know, it, when I you know, think back. But looking at the situation now, we've seen the devaluation. We've seen some companies actually impacted by that when we look at their results. Mm. But it, it seems we're having some kind of stability at this time with yes. what the Central Bank of Nigeria you know, has done. You know, we've seen the Dutch um, auction system introduced uh, this week, the first one. We've also seen um, interventions, you know, with the BDCs. Yes. So looking at, you know, H1 and now we're in H2, do you still see, you know, stability with the Naira? Do you see the Central Bank able to defend the Naira, you know, going forward? I think so. Um, I think that the central bank has done a phenomenal job. And that speaks to what I was talking about, accountability and orderliness. Once you bring accountability and orderly principles to a process, um, you begin to get people to act in the way that they should act. You know, so it's difficult because um, you are working in an environment where um, there's, there are very few options. But... I think that the central bank has tried to hold things down. Um, I believe that all the efforts that the central bank is bringing in is now what the um, economic authorities are trying to support with um, improved fiscal um, promotion, I'd say. Um, and so we need to look at critical areas. You know, I mean, we speak about energy a lot. I think we also should speak about logistics. And my view is that we haven't started in trying to develop agriculture in Nigeria. We haven't. You know, um, there's just a lot of lip service applied to it. Um, I don't think we've applied our minds to what we need to do to improve productivity and distribution significantly. And I say that again, productivity and distribution. Because many times we, we focus on productivity, perhaps, but we don't remember that we must take the goods to the market, get the goods sold, and give the money back to the farmers. That's, that's, a, that's a chain. And many times we don't think that that's important. But all of that is important. So if you focus only on productivity and you don't sell, and you don't give the um, producers money to go back to the farm to improve, that's a challenge. We speak about security also. I mean, that has to be resolved. You know, but I think um, that is um, what we need to focus on. Because yeah. some some would say, you know, stability is nice, you know, but we yes. would also like to see, you know, strengthening. And not uh, that, not not about now. Um, I think I think <laughs> that we're still so struggling with liquidity issues. Right, and you know, you know our main stay at this point, oil. Yes, we've seen the issues. Oh yes, you know, with ramping up um, production. Do you think it's time to say, you know what? We're not meeting up, you know, when it comes to oil. Let's start looking at other avenues. Or do we still try to win this battle Nigeria you know, is, Nigeria, gaining from oil? Nigeria is Nigeria, I think that this government is very big on gas. Very, very big on gas. I mean, and also there's this there's a buzz about um, transition, um, climate change, trans, uh, transition um, arrangements for um, uh, climate change. And um, so Nigeria is more a gas company. I mean, it's, uh, that's uh, what they call it. It's cliche. It's more a gas company than an oil company, an oil country, sorry. And so there needs to be focus on getting this through. And I know that that's a lot of what government is focusing on. But these things are not so easy to do. You know, it takes time. It takes focus. 
And one other thing, again, we speak about accountability. We must tone down self-dealing. Self-dealing is just gets in the way of the progress that you want to um, achieve, you know, because all your efforts and all your concentration needs to be applied to pulling us out of the woods. I don't know who's self-dealing, you know, but I'm just saying that for accountability's sake, transparency, we need to be putting back what we are generating so that we can take ourselves out of this quagmire that we find ourselves yeah, in. Yeah, because we need to really um, get out of there. But um, next week, we're expecting uh, the CMC uh, meeting. Stakeholders in the capital market are going to be meeting to discuss you know, the way forward. So uh, what are you seeing? Because I know you're a stakeholder. Oh, yes. Um, so we're looking forward to the first CMC meeting of the new executive of the Securities and Exchange Commission. And um, they have espoused a lot of bold... Um, bold uh, vision, I'd say. Um, they're, they're aspiring to do a lot of bold things. I think that's what it is. And innovation is in the middle of all of this. Um, I think that the capital market is the fulcrum of reviving the fiscal side of things for Nigeria. So much of what the new executive of SEC is committing to is trying to get the capital markets to contribute effectively to pushing Nigeria to the vision of the president of a $1 trillion uh, GDP, $1 trillion economy. And um, I guess that there are, there, there are critical things that need to be done. You know, I think this is more of brain work than um, a lot of brawn. You know, and um, we have significant brain capacity in that team. And so we're looking forward to um, working to get ourselves involved with uh, the direction that we would have to go. But let me just say, the regulator can't be the one that powers us in the direction that we should go. It's really the um, operators, right? But I guess the most important thing for us and the excitement for most of the people in the capital markets is that I guess that this team of regulators, this team of the executive team, understands that regulation is not just, is not policing. Regulation is facilitation of um, the process and ensuring that the operators play correctly, but then drive in the direction that actually expands the space. That's what we're looking forward to. So I'm, look very, I'm very excited about the meeting that we're going to have on Wednesday. Um, and I think that the um, team is very serious. They've mapped out areas that they want to focus on. And beyond that, they are consultative, you know, and they've opened their doors to speak to the market to say, what do we need to do right? And where do we need to focus? These are the kind of areas we think that we can see um, progress, you know. So how are you, going, how are you guys going to get on board and drive in that direction? I yeah, will definitely be watching out, you know, mm -hmm. for that. And I'm sure a lot, you know, cooking up right there at the NAS, NASD, you know, exchange and uh, for the second half yes. of 2024 and beyond. Yes. So NASD has done 58% um, at this point, 58% market index. That is the, all sh the um, NASD um, index, um, NASD Securities Index, NSI. Um, the is a sub index, which is a pension index, that is the companies that pension funds could invest in if they're investing on NESD, that has done um, 114%, um, because those are, that's, the, that's the meat of the, of the market, really. You know, um, and, but I think more significant is that at this point in the year, we have done, the value of trading has exceeded what we did in the entire period of last year. That shows you that there's even a momentum but more, than, more importantly for me, this is where the focus really should be. Um, we are finding our way and we're making significant progress on our SME development mandate. And I say SME guardedly because what I'd rather call it is growth company mandates. Um, we have some very signature um, transactions that have happened. They're not large transactions. It is the model that is most important for me. Small businesses. A lady who is a fashion designer that exports her clothes to um, the Western countries, you know, she's grown her business almost 50, 60% in one year. 
And I love to, you know, hear yeah. about uh, the export oh. um, stories because there's a lady who's there's, a, there's another young lady who's uh, into um, film production. We're working with her to try and get her. So we fashion the model to fund these businesses, um, listen to what their challenges are, trying to um, incubate them. Like I've always said, to build them in the direction. So I think that at this point, um, many of the growth businesses that are looking for funding. I find it difficult to work with the traditional sectors. Should be looking to deal with a company like NESD. We found right. the model right, you know, and we're just we're now ready to scale it. I will definitely keep tracking that progress. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Iwaride Longe, MD, NESD, OTC Exchange. Always great having your perspective. Thank you. All right, so um, let's um, look at the top gainers and uh, losers. Um, the NGX, uh, we see Oando PLC, I uh, would gain about 40%, uh, percent, no, 60%, percent actually. I could have 40 now, uh, 60 uh, cover. Then we see the likes of RT, uh, Briscoe, Japol Gold. Um, then, um, definitely looking at um, Oando, I did hear some investors couldn't lay their hands on um, Oando's shares because it was on full bid. Um, so, what do we expect uh, for Oando going into? Um, next week, we'll definitely be watching out for that if investors are still going to be um, trying to buy more or will it be taking, uh, will they be taking profit? We'll definitely um, find out. Then for the top losers, we uh, champion breweries, PLC, uh, Tunara, 77, come up, down 15%. Uh, Bois Cement lost about 9.99% um, um, for the week. Could be related to uh, pre-tax uh, uh, profit dropped there by 54% in the second quarter of 2024. So investors could be reacting to that. Uh, we also got a report that energy costs of Nigeria's cement manufacturers, that rose by about 140% in the first half of uh, 2024. And we know how, you know, anything that uh, drives off a cost of doing business definitely um, impacts on uh, profit. So uh, we'll be looking at these um, stocks to see how they perform, you know, going into um, next week. We'll see if investors try to cherry pick or we'll see maybe uh, profit taking. Um, that's a wrap um, on the show. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can watch us again on our YouTube channel and uh, you can get uh, more perspective. You can also visit www.channelcv.com. Thank you so much for watching. From me and the team right here at Channels HQ, it's bye for now.